statement and send a message to our next opponent. Bergen Riley gets it into play. Her swing goes to Landfair. She goes off speed. Merritt Beeson gets the overpass and the first point going to Minnesota. What about that save by McKenna Walker in the backcourt? That's what just going for it does. That was a tough shot and she just extended her body, got that ball up and it went right over the net. Nebraska could not handle that overpass. She took all that heat there from the swing from Beeson too. Becca Alec right up the middle, and that's what Nebraska wants to establish early in this match. Yeah, it's super important for Becca Alec, the middle attacker, to get into some rhythm here offensively, and that means that the pass is good enough for Riley to set middle. That's a key point of emphasis for this Cornhusker team tonight. That was a big problem in their first loss against the Badgers just last night. Another swing for Beeson, and it's kept up. No, it's not. Nebraska with the point. John Cook in his 24th season leading the Huskers, his fourth Big Ten title since joining in 2011, and the first outright since 2017. Already wrapping it up a week ago on the road against Iowa. And an ace for the Huskers will put them up by two here early. Yeah, that's a nice tough serve by number 27, Harper Murray for Nebraska. Just a flat, tough serve. And they're going after number 14 for Minnesota right now. Leads this Husker team in aces. Even just as a freshman, she goes off the tape. Awalea able to read it. And Taylor Landfair gets the contact on that big rip. Well, nice job by Aulea to just go for it. reading the play. It's not a perfect play when that ball is trickling over the net. Typically, middles don't react well. She did just keep the ball off the ground. And then Landfair with that nice flat shot going off the blocker's hands for a point. She's showing out for the middles, yeah. getting down like that. Finally, Baton Horse but picked up by Murr. Rodriguez, the bump set to Beeson, the denial by Awalea and Taylor Landfair. That time, though, she gets a piece for the kill. Yeah, that's a great rally here. Great defensive plays on both sides of the net. Keegan Cook in his first season leading the Gophers. Yes, Cook's on both sides. No relation that I'm aware of, Audrey. None. But this, <laughs> this Gopher team has won four straight, including three sweeps, really hitting their stride at the exact right time because the committee does look at your recent history, what you've been doing of late heading in to the postseason. Yeah, and you know, this Gopher team, like you said, they found their lineup. They've got a preferred lineup right now with Taylor Lanfair as the L1, Davis as the M1. They've got defensive players that know their role, so they really feel like they're, they're in rhythm more now than they were at the beginning of the season. They're at Beeson and Doug by Lanfair. There's Walker, she's got a heavy arm. And the points going to Minnesota off that whistle. Yeah, double contact by Bergen Riley. It was a great defensive get on both sides of the net. Tremendous swings and big kids laying out in the backcourt to keep the ball alive, but just a missed touch there by Riley ends the rally. Yeah. Yeah. Riley to Bane Horse, and she rips it. Yeah, it's the play that I love. It's the B and the go. You've got the middle going up, and right over top of the middle is a fast set to that left pin. I just love the rhythm, the tempo, the location, everything looking really good on that play by the by Nebraska. Eric Beeson at the service line. That goes out, and then we're tied up. That'll send Kylie Murr to the service line. Already two airs from the service line for Nebraska. Riley behind her head, and that is the freshman, Andy Jackson, with the swing. Yeah, and it all came off of the arms of Harper Murray, a great pass. She's gonna get a lot of action and serve receive, and if she can pass balls like that, and this Nebraska team can run that fast tempo to Jackson. Boy, this is going to be a tough Nebraska team to stop tonight. Annie Choboy. 
off the middle. Erica Davis, but kept up. And, but it will be a kill by Erica Davis. You always play until you get that whistle, but great effort defensively. Yeah, a little tap there right over top of the block, and you see all the Nebraska defenders going hard for the ball, but that was perfectly placed by Erica Davis. And something the Gophers have been trying to discover this entire season, a middle running offense, but Erica Davis has really come into her own in Big Ten play, nearly double the amount of kills per set than in the non-conference portion of the season, plus her defensive impact. Yeah, that's huge, and it's not only huge uh, for, for Davis, but just as a setter, knowing that you can rely on your middle to get some points for you, that's, that's huge. So that confidence between the middle and the setter is so important in this game. Kennedy Orr, the Twin Cities native, gets an overpass there and a point to Wisconsin as she's transitioned into that service specialist role. Or again for the Huskers. Kind of Walker misfires and another point to Nebraska. Well, one of the things I'm noticing about this gopher offense is that the ball is set really high to the pin. They're just laying it up there and letting their outsides take big whacks at the ball, trying to go high off the blocker's hands. Seems to be what their left sides are trying to do with that high set. Three-nothing run for the Huskers. The kind of Walker taking some heat off. Another swing for Murray. She's denied emphatically. Murray to settle things down. At the net, Palabiak comes through. Placed over by Shaftmaster. She gets it done for a huge rally win. This is what Big Ten Volleyball is all about. We got a crazy sequence of plays here. Ball tripling at the net. Great defense. Blocks everywhere. And then finally a little touch there by Shaftmaster. Ends up ending that rally. But boy, what a rally it was. A lot of effort. Final match of the regular season. And that lands for Harper Murray. Just a beautiful swing there. Yeah, lots of topspin on that ball. Her hand-to-ball -ball contact is superb. You're going to see her going up, elbow back, and then takes a little bit off, gets her whole hand on that ball, gets topspin, so it goes from hand to court very quickly. Bergen Riley back to serve. Up the middle quickly, and Becca Alec in a flash <laughs> registers the kill. A tremendous, she puts herself in a position to get set. That was tremendous transition going from blocking to offense. Four kills combined for her and Jackson. They had just three combined against Wisconsin. Minnesota picking up a point with that whistle. Elise McGee coming in to serve for Minnesota. <clears throat> Trying to make sure they stay within striking distance of this Huskers team they met the first weekend of play in the regular season, it was a Nebraska sweep, but a whole lot has transpired for both of these teams since. Landfair over the block, and she finishes. Yeah, what I noticed there from Nebraska is Landfair was set inside, and Harper Murray, who's playing the right side in just this rotation, you can see how she's not lined up in front of Taylor Landfair. There's a lot of open court for Taylor Landfair to hit, and so as a right side blocker, you want to set up the block so you're nose to nose in front of that hitter. Merritt Beeson tooling it off the block with everything she's got. Yeah, that's a tremendous hit. It, it turns a one-on-six into a one-on-one. -on -one. It's just you and the blocker, and you can exploit the block if you've got that shot as part of your arsenal to just go hard and wipe it off. It's an easy point if you can do it, and she does it very well. In contention for Big Ten Player of the Year, her first year 
in this conference. That contact awkwardly almost absent from Minnesota. Lanfair gets the angle. Yeah, Lanfair takes advantage of that net. Take a look at this defensive play. A good five and five set here. Great up. Tried to keep it alive, but uh, point goes to the Gophers. Minnesota now within two, but they go back to Alec, the hot hand right now. Yeah, and she's she has a hot hand because she has hot feet, in my opinion. She's moving so well to put herself in position. She's starting in that right front area of the court, gets up and gets herself available. Her distance from the net is perfect, so she can swing right through that ball. Shaftmaster finds Grote on the slot. Bait and horse. Riley looking to Beeson. She's rejected. And Bait and horse pushes it right into that block. I'm so impressed by this Nebraska play. The coverage is unbelievable. These hitters are going up with a lot of confidence, knowing that if the ball gets hit in the block, my teammates got my back, and they are going to cover the ball and extend the rally. That's what makes Nebraska such a great team. Number one defense in the country, trying to do that back-to-back -back years. Landfair with the swing once more. Bump set from Rodriguez, flying in is Beeson and mistimed. The point goes to the Gophers. Yeah, a rare bad bump set by Rodriguez that was kind of inside, so I don't think that um, was where she wanted the ball to go. Typically, you want to have it closer to the antenna, about three to five feet off. Taylor Lanfair already surpassing last season's ace total a couple weeks ago. That time going off hands. Another point for Nebraska. They're up by four. And I think that's what Beeson does exceptionally well. She can take the ball and do some great magical things with it. That time just hitting flat and off the blocker's hands. Again, young kids like to go down with the ball. She's making a living off of going high off the blocker's hands. Rhodes takes a swing. Banghorst is denied. Gross. Awalea in on the stop. And that's a good looking Minnesota block right there. Groat lining up perfectly. Take a look at Groat's eye sequence. Once the ball is released, she's focusing on Baton Horse, lines up perfectly, and then it's that reach over the net. It's not how high you get, it's high, how far over the net you get with your hands. Murr. Bump sets it to Wooker. And Peyton Horst able to get a hand on it. Placed over, but the pancake keeps it up. Shaftmaster, outstanding effort. Quickly up the middle, Minnesota read it all the way. And Wooker pulling it off the block for another long rally win. It is a grind because you have to prepare every single weekend. You've got to scout hard. You've got to come ready to play. You don't want to be the team that gets upset by an other, a team that's not ranked. So, you know, this just speaks to the grind of this Big Ten conference. There's not another conference like it in the nation. Andy Jackson unloading there on the slide. But, Andre, you're exactly right. We hear it over and over again that it starts to sound like a cliche. Mm -hmm. But what you hear from players and coaches, you cannot overlook anyone. No, and it's the scouting. It's the prep. Um, you know, you don't have a weekend off where you can say, okay, you know what, we're, we're going to take a little bit of time off practice. We can we can just rest on our laurels. No, that doesn't happen in this conference. I'll tell you that. Erica Davis with a big blast. Well, Erica Davis is playing in that middle position, and she's running that B away from the setter. Puts herself in a great opportunity, but again, the pass has got to be there. So Minnesota's passing game is looking pretty good. Jackson on the slide again, gets an overpass. Harper Murray, she 
hammers it. <laughs> well, Landfair had a tremendous dig for the Gophers. Boy, she's holding that middle back area very nicely. Take a look at this dig by Landfair extending out. It does help when you're a taller kid. You take up a little bit more room in the back court, but ultimately Harper Murray coming in with a bomb on that left pin. Taylor Landfair career highs. And everything but scoring this season, including Diggs. As McKenna Wooker is stopped. The setter, Bergen Riley, rejecting her. Well, that's a tough position to be in when you're the right side blocker because you've got to respect the middle. And then she just takes off and goes one-on-one -on -one with McKenna Wooker and does a great job of just reading that swing, sealing the net, and getting a stop block. One-on-one -on -one against one of the most vicious swings in this conference. Great effort by Orr getting underneath that off-speed shot. Wooker taking some heat off, and no one else will get there. Point to Wisconsin. It's point to Nebraska. Right. It's so fun to watch how the defense on both sides of the net, really, how the backcourt defense lines up perfectly. I have a hard time looking to the next 10 to 15 seconds. It's just a different world than the older cats. And he says, I'll just use that to my advantage. <laughs> Kids these days. Kennedy Orr back at the service line. Good effort by Riley, keeping that up. And the rejection by Minnesota's block once more. Erica Davis making her presence known. And Davis doing a tremendous job of just reaching over the net, sealing that net, and taking space away from the attacker for Nebraska. And uh, that, that sure does help. You just have to have that quick lateral speed, follow the ball, and then just reach up and over. Shaftmaster setting to land fair. The joust at the net and won by Bergen Riley. Wow, Bergen Riley up against two big blockers. Take a look at this. She's got hands in front of her. She pushes so hard right at the point of contact. What I like about Bergen Riley is she is poised. She's a great competitor, but she's not overly talkative, you know, she just kind of, she's a silent killer, is how Cook described her. She is a fighter out there for Nebraska. It's not normal stuff that you see on the replay there. Harper Murray, a big swing, just blasting it down the line. So what makes that kill happen? It's because Becca Alec has been getting so many sets. Look at how Minnesota's blocker bites. She bites with the middle, one-on-one -on -one opportunity on the outside. That's why you establish middle early in a set. Bergen Riley, a little too long on that serve. Ends a five-to-one run by Nebraska, but a five-point lead here and set one on the road. Not just on the road, but road back-to-backs with Nebraska in Madison last night. Maybe Avalea tipping it over. Harper Murray can't get there. And Elise McGee doing her job as the server, putting pressure on the passing team right now. She has her target. She's going after it. Got an easy point for her team. Murr on the bench right now for Minnesota. Harper Murray over the block and Polabi keeping it up, but it will be point to Nebraska. A great effort by the defensive player. Palabia, take a look at how she is back and then takes off, takes two big steps, gets that hand under the ball. Great effort. Palabia, the freshman from Turkey. Targeted there by Murray. From the back row, it is McKenna Wooker, but right there is Rodriguez. And a point to Minnesota after that goes over the tip. You're seeing great defensive efforts on both sides of the net. It's tremendous. These back row players, they are not letting hitters get easy kills or easy tips. And sometimes it's difficult to transition out of that if it's not perfect right to the setter. But you've got to appreciate the effort that the, defensives, the defensive specialists are showing us tonight. An ace for the Gophers and Shaftmasters. 
right, this serve is going down the line right after Batenhorst. That is their target. We'll see if Nebraska shifts a little bit here, trying to get Batenhorst out of that service pattern. You have to see it right there. Batenhorst with a strong swing. That will give Nebraska a four-point lead. Yeah, so let's take a look at the difference, what happened here. Batenhorst, you can see, she just went right out of the court, moving up to get out of that serve-receive pattern because in volleyball, you want your best passers to touch the majority of balls. So if you're struggling, move out of the way, but you can't overlap. You have to do it after the ball has been contacted by the server. Batenhorst, a strong swing unloading there. And it is set point for the Huskers. Eric Beeson tries to put this set away. Nebraska takes set one against the Gophers, 25-19. And it's on the shoulders of Beeson hitting two balls by the server. You can't release early. If you do, at least you can't commit an overlapping rule. Some creativity to try and put their players in the best window possible. Yeah, yeah, overlapping violation. So you want to make sure that you're not violating any overlapping rules. So you have to wait until the point of contact for the server, absolutely. Merrick Beeson starting things out for the Huskers. They hit nearly 300 in set one, held Minnesota to 128. And those sound like Nebraska numbers, offensively and defensively. Taylor Lanfair going high hands. Red well by Phoebe Awalea. And Shaftmaster again with the pancake. for Murray going off speed and Shaftmaster there once more. Lanfair puts it away. Well, this is a fun one to watch again. Tons of defense on both sides of the net. Look at that effort. Shaftmaster laying out. Great effort. And then this inside set to Taylor Lanfair. Boy, she just destroys that ball. Off the set from Choboy with the kill. Yeah, you just see how physical Beeson is. She can just get up, and she just leaps over top of that blocker. Hits high, hard. Boy, what a tremendous talent she is. Seven kills, but the last three for Nebraska going back to set number one. And an ace for the Huskers. Strong start in set two. Harper Murray going after Landfair. Take a look at this serve. Just dying there. And they're trying to get that right side of Taylor Landfair. That's a really difficult ball to pass on server side. And they target her once more. Beeson into that Minnesota block. Harper Murray with a great dig in middle back. Again, these balls are coming at her so hard, and she not only digs the ball, but puts it in a great position for her setter to set the ball. I love the reverse flow there by Bergen Riley, putting it to her right side attacker. He's hitting 500 to start this match. And Groats able to terminate for the Gophers. Well, Groat has so much talent, too. She can really change the outcome of a set. She needs the ball put right in her sweet spot, but she can swing hard, and I like her approach right now. She's really getting after it on that right pin. Got a big boost for the Gophers out of the transfer portal from Cal as Banghorse will miss fire. serve. Honored yesterday for senior night after their sweep of Illinois. Nice swing, slicing cross court by Beeson. 
Well, that's what Beeson does. She's got a ton of power behind that shoulder, but then she sees where Shaftmaster is, and she cuts it really sharp right out of Shaftmaster's um, ability to get. So, well-placed shot. Quick set. Doesn't go for D Erica Davis. McKenna Wooker there. A little bit too long, giving the point to the Huskers. Great look there by Lexi Rodriguez, just to know where she is on the court and to let the ball go. Just great court awareness. Nebraska leading by three. They were able to take advantage of a fading gopher squad in set one to close it out, allowing 19 points. Groat snapping it down the line, but she also is off target. And that's I can only go so far. Mint chocolate chip, my favorite. Me too. Mm -hmm. Blow with the swing, and right there is Murray to keep it in play. Kind of Wooker getting a piece. No, she does not. Point to the Huskers. I think Wooker said, uh, there's a touch, coach. And I feel like if she wins this challenge, yes. Yeah. She'll go up and, and continue to, to take big swings. She knew that that was a point for her team. She had lots of confidence in that call. That's a successful challenge by Keegan Cook. He retains that challenge, so both sides have two apiece. And it's now a three-point difference with Lydia Grote at the service line. Off the middle, Amy Jackson getting an overpass and taking care of it. Merrick Beeson that easily. Great pass there again. I, I just love Harper Murray. I love her skills. She does so many great things. We often focus on her front court, but she's passing nails right now. Again, you could run middle, and that opens things up, so it all starts from that first contact. Beeson five kills here in the second set, and then an ace. The third of the match for Nebraska. Walker taking another big swing. Minnesota needed that kill. You know, at this point in the season, you've got to have your outside swinging with confidence, and that's exactly what McKenna Wooker is doing tonight. She's getting that hard, deep shot in the corner. Rodriguez is playing sharp. There's no, really no answer for that swing. Service air by the Gophers. McKenna Wooker does have four airs tonight, but clearly wanting to put the ball in her hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she Even though she has a few airs, you know, that, that young lady has a ton of talent. She'll work her way out of it. There's Laney Chopor. Lanfair gets the touch off the block. You know, Lanfair is not trying to avoid the block at all. She's just going all power. You know, she has asked Shaftmeister to set her a higher ball in the last couple matches, and she seems to be more efficient. Now, she's, she approaches a little slower than maybe some of the outside, so that's why she prefers that high set. Cook says they want to take advantage of her length with that kind of set as Beeson comes flying in for the kill. and exploding from the backcourt as that ball is being touched by the setter. She's already taken her first step, which means that the accuracy from the set by Bergen Riley, it's got to be on point, and it is. A Bergen Riley has been impressing me all season long with her ability to put the ball right where her hitters need it. Up the middle, Alalea places it perfectly. 
Well, Shaftmaster set her beautifully because the block was taking away that shot back to position one. But take a look at how Shaftmaster leads her and gives her that angle to hit. So the setter can can really manipulate where that middle attacker can swing that time. Shaftmaster sets her up so she can hit left back corner. On the back row again, it's Beeson taking some heat off. Whoa, that is a serious cross-court shot. That's a breathtaking shot. And she even said, whoa, I think she surprised herself. Take a look at the angle. We've got Harper Murray. She's at about eight foot, and she almost ripped her head off with that swing. Wow. Master with the ace. Minnesota's second in this match, and a roll for the Gophers. Three-nothing run. Harper Murray moved out of the server seat pattern. A little shift again. Shaftmaster goes into the net. Yeah, Lainey Choboy, she told Harper Murray, I got you, move up, I'll take this left back area of the court. So it's great when you've got these role players that have such confidence in their skill and they can help teammates out. That's what it's all about, right? And that's formidable when you're staring down in the back row seeing Rodriguez and Choboy as your options. Harper Murray gets it done. Now, Becca Alec did a great job in the middle of that rally to just take another shot away, took away that left back attempted kill by Minnesota's middle. So good adjustment on the block there by Becca Allen. Up the middle for Alec. Back the other way for Minnesota with Awalea. And Merritt Beeson has been on an incredible roll here in set number two, racking up another kill. Yeah, and that was a middle back not. This is a team in an unfamiliar kind of environment coming off their first loss of the season, and everyone wanted to see how they would respond, and the answer is sharply. But Minnesota keeping things close. They're within four after that timeout. Well, Grote, typically a right side attacker in that server seat pattern, stayed on the left side, put a little spin on that ball, nice top spin, got to the, got to the, Court there pretty quick, offer for hand. Stepping in is Harper Murray. No stopping that. Yeah, Harper Murray just found that line right outside of the blocker's hands, ripped it down the line. Wow, tremendous shot. And the freshman goes back to serve. Hitting 300 for this match as well. And getting Minnesota out of system. This horse is stuffed. Grote and Awalea hit that denied. Yeah, that was a great block, great setup there. Bainhorst took this five and five set and just went low seam with it. You can see how she went right into the belly of the block. You've got to be a little craftier because when you got a block that big in front of you, you've got to do something with that ball. Grote and then dug by Rodriguez. The bump set to Grote once more. Flying in from the back row is Harper Murray delivering a blast. <laughs> so much firepower. You've got Harper Murray in the backcourt. Look at her speed on that. I feel like her speed generates power. Great defensive get there by Rodriguez. And just, again, a perfectly placed set where she is leaping from behind the 10-foot line and lands well in front of the 10-foot line. Throat gets another swing. And, this, and Nebraska gets another point. And this is where Keegan Cook would like his team, of course, not to bleed points. You want to keep this close. So this is a huge side-out point, potentially, 
for the Gophers. McKenna Walker terminates exactly what Minnesota needed. As you said, she goes from passing to attacking there. Yeah, and she does a great job, again, having that courage to just go for it. She sees the seam in the block, and it ricochets off Andy Jackson in the middle for Nebraska. He was gross going off the tape. Walker goes off speed. Rodriguez can't get there. And Minnesota within four. Yeah, Rodriguez, she was going hard for the ball, and then it just kind of ricocheted in a different direction. And she was moving one way. The ball kind of tricked her, and it was just kind of out of her reach there. But great effort, nonetheless, by Lexi Rodriguez. John. Yeah, no net. No net on the play. So John Cook loses that challenge, and he'll be left with one. So Lydia Grote goes back to the service line. Targeting Murray that time. And Merrick Beeson just drills it. <laughs> And that's a serious cross-court shot. Uh, you know, Beeson just tough to defend her. You can take one shot away, and she'll find another way to kill you. Every kill here in the second set from the arm of Murray or Beeson. Beeson with eight in this set alone. McKenna Walker, and then dug by Beeson, taking all that heat. Beautiful from the back row by Murray, the range that she has. Right, and let's talk again about the Nebraska adjustments that are being made. You're going to see a triple block here against Wooker. You're going to see all three Nebraska players going up, and as a result, they're able to transition and score. So Nebraska making all kinds of adjustments on the fly to help get points. Melanie Shaftmaster finds the floor. We know she is offensively inclined, and so does Nebraska. Yep, you know, she likes the high pass, and when the pass comes high and she's in the front court, she is crafty, and she'll move that ball around that time, finding an opening in that left back area of the court. Allie Batenhorst makes something happen there with the rip. It's a great bump set, too. Nice and high as an outside hitter. you got to be able to hit those out-of-system sets. It's great when you get them in tempo, but you got to be one of these players that can adjust to those high sets and find a way to score. Not always going to be ideal circumstances. Absolutely. Up the middle, Erica Davis gets the contact and the kill. Yeah, Davis looks really good as the M1. That means that she's right next to the setter, and she can run in front or behind. Now, Davis doesn't run any slides. In fact, none of the middles for the Gophers run slides, so it doesn't help the outside attacker very much in terms of uh, some space between the block. Here's a slide, and Andy Jackson makes quick work. Yeah, Andy Jackson goes off one foot. She is just such an athlete. That one foot takeoff, she elevates so high. Again, this is only possible if you have a good pass. She exploits the middle blocker for the Gophers, just going high off their hands. Seven kills amongst the Nebraska middles. Three last night. Yeah, big, big change, big difference. From the back row, Wooker winding and firing. That's a serious swing. You talk about a great athlete. You're looking at one right there, number three for the Gophers. Shaftmaster does a good job. As she's struggling to get her feet to the ball, she's moving back on that bad pass. She just sets her closest hitter and lets Wooker just take a big whack at it. Harper Murray, wow, was there a lot of heat on that swing. <laughs> Shaftmaster had to put her hands up to defend her head, and she just looked after she got this ball. 
it just, I, I don't think you're going to be able to see Shaftmaster's face, but she was just like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> As were all of us. Yes, absolutely. Shaftmaster going cross court to Lamphick. And a beautifully well set block, Awalea able to send it back. And that was a roll shot right into the block. And sometimes you do that if you don't feel like you've got the kill. I think she was trying to go over top, but kind of just a miss hit uh, by Harper Murray on that. But a great line dig by Bergen Riley to keep that ball alive. Beeson trying to power it through. Dug by Rodriguez, and Beeson chases it down. Rooker through the block, finds the tiniest bit of space. <laughs> yeah, she, she's been blocked, and so those adjustments have been made mid-season, and we've seen her numbers go up. So kudos to her for speaking, you know, to the coach and just telling him, hey, I, I need a little bit of an adjustment, and uh, he delivered and talked to his center, and now they seem to be in better rhythm. This wasn't just a readjustment. It was kind of building from scratch midway through the year to say, let's break this down and build up what we need to get the most out of this Big Ten player of the year. And she's turned it around here in Big Ten play with magnificent numbers. Rowe tries to readjust. Great job by Alec keeping it up. And then the swing by Beeson and a huge celebration from her teammates, including Cho Boy. Boy, Beeson, what a beast. Just let that swing speak for itself. If you want to look at a player of the year candidate, you should be looking at number 13 right there, Merritt Beeson. Coming up, I want to stick around, both Andre and I giving uh, our take on some postseason awards, some traditional, some knots. You'll not want to miss it. Walker has that tapped back. Dominance at the net by the Huskers. Well, I'm taking a look at McKenna Walker. She kind of landed um, awkwardly. She's uh, talking to the trainer right now. She's got a big smile, though. And it looks like she is staying on the court. Yep. She's a fighter. Yep. Well, look at that last swing. She came down trying to keep it up. Harper Murray, a beautiful ace, and set number two also goes to the Huskers. <laughs> Great. Might say you're on Nebraska's payroll or something. Oh, but, no. You know, now, nah, there, there's an argument for, for your <laughs> picks as well. Can't wait to see them. Well, especially freshman of the year, I think, is one of the most difficult ones. As Nebraska starts things off in set number three with a service ace. That'll send Taylor Landfair. Eric Beeson powering through the block. And Nebraska will even things up after that surface air starting things off. It's the little things, again, I'm going to point out Becca Alec as a middle, coming down and covering for her outside hitter and then getting the ball. I mean, these are the little things where you save points, you extend the rally. Becca Alec was key to getting that point. Harper Murray into the net. Minnesota making a big comeback here in set number three against the number one team in the country. We feel like that resume is strong enough. They've won 10 of their last 13 matches. But this would be an important one as Nebraska strikes right back to tie it up at two. How about that set by Bergen Riley? One-handed, tight to the net. Finds a way to just lay that up there. That is a tremendous set. That one has to go on her highlight reel for sure. 16 kills for Merritt Beeson, hitting a casual 556.
just one air on her 27 swings is Groats able to tool it off the off the block. Yeah, Groat going right after the middle blocker. When you see that the middle blocker is a little late and they're just reaching out with their hands, you just want to go for it. Just wipe it right off their hands as hard as you can. Groat after that kill, back to serve. Getting Nebraska out of system. Walker. Oh, and here you see Minnesota going after Batenhorst on the serve. A marginal pass. Results in an easy ball. And then take a look at this. No approach by McKenna Walker, but a kill nonetheless. That's athleticism right there. That was Minnesota's largest lead of the night. And then a service error. Yeah, for the Huskers, number 13, Merritt Beeson. Merritt Beeson now serving, having an electric night. As an ace to go along with her offensive performance. There's Walker over the block. Beeson right there. Once more, taking over right now to start set three. Kylie Murr coming up big for her Gophers here, taking this big swing by Batenhorst, laying out perfect form right there on defense. And then Wooker just going after that middle blocker, going after those hands when that middle blocker is not hip to hip and the hands are not over, you go after them. Nine kills. Bergen Riley says, I can play offense, too. <laughs> and just the timing of that was absolutely perfect. I'm giving her the chef's kiss on this one. <laughs> There's nobody there. No one's expecting it. And she gently just taps it over the net. She has so much deceptiveness. It's hard to read what her move is. Well, it's because her point of contact is the same every single time, no matter if she sets outside, back, middle, or attacks it over the net. Lady Choboy dialing up an ace. You know, we talk about the setter having to get a point of contact. Her body, I'm talking about Bergen Riley, is the same every time. So she doesn't give away where the ball is going to be set based on her body position. Choboy, back to back. Choboy, uh, she, uh, there's something about her. I like her competitive spirit. I love how gutsy she is. And, she has a little bit of latent luck on her side, too, with this ball that trickles over the net, but she's a tremendous defensive player. Oh, she has fun out there, but she's a little scary out there, too, <laughs> with her competitiveness, just how they like it. Taylor Landfair breaking up that 3 nothing scoring run with a beautiful swing. Well, Minnesota, they can stay neck and neck with Nebraska. This is going to be an interesting third set. Outside hitters right now for Minnesota are taking big, big swings, and that is that Thumb down shot that goes deep to the corner, super hard to defend. Look at Lanfair's numbers. Heading nearly 400. Andy Jackson on the slide, Shaftmaster right there. And Lanfair is unstoppable. She's got 22 airless swings, nine kills. Well, you talk about a big time performance. Look at this. Take a look. As soon as her hand makes contact with that ball, she just hits that sharp cross court co shot. Wow. Great celebration there. That almost looked like the Gulje Guchtikin yeah. celebration for the Badgers. Morgan Riley tries to dump it in. From the back row, Beeson. Wow, she flies in for the kill. Unbelievable. Lots of space along the net because there was a slide attacker clearing out. Then you've got your outside hitter and Beeson. The timing of that is just superb. Take a look one on one and then just hits that cross court shot. Just kissing that sideline. Outstanding yeah. night for Beeson. 17 kills and a 552. She has not been slowed down. Goes into the tape, and that's a point to the Huskers. 
Yeah, not the type of error that we're used to seeing from Landfair, but you're right. Just kind of pulled that one too low, and she knows it. My fault. I'll g give me the next ball. <laughs> I'll get a kill for you. Just her first tonight. Yeah. Kylie Murr, all-out effort, and we play on. Maybe Awalea can't get that to drop. For the back row again, it is Beeson dug by Wooker. Beeson goes long. And the effort pays off for the Gophers. Yeah, defense is an attitude, and right now both teams are really dialed in. Beeson was going for that kill, uh, just hit the ball a little long, but this is great volleyball we're seeing here. Big Ten volleyball displayed at its finest here in this third set. In both teams, moving on to the postseason, wanting to be sharp. Harper Murray. Murr can't get a handle of it. That's a big kill by the freshman. Yeah, Harper Murray didn't deliver a great pass, was calling for her setter to just lay it up high. She was approaching right toward the net, and at the last second, she puts thumb down on the ball and changes the angle of that swing. Groats. That's a heavy arm that she's got. And Minnesota ties it back up. Well, it's nice when you get into that rotation and your right side can take those breathtaking swings. Grote here is just going to wait for it. She finds herself with a not so well formed block in front of her and just takes a rip. And the fact that she was able to also get that kill off of Rodriguez. Yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah, Rodriguez usually has that cross court just clamped down, but that was uh, a lot of fire power behind that swing. Landfair with the service air. <laughs> Riley looking to Baton Horse, and she whips that <laughs> down the line. Wow, that set had a little bit of spin to it. I didn't know if the ref was going to call it, but here you see a fast tempo, and wow, <laughs> there was no block there. That ball went from her hand to that line shot really quickly. She's all smiles after that swing. Murray over the block for the back row, flying in is Murr, and it's the Huskers. Continuing to do damage. They're up by three all of a sudden. Yeah, Huskers are really targeting Taylor Land. Minnesota stating its case for the NCAA tournament. You see their RPI at 43. They are seven and three. Their last 10 matches. The committee looking at that recent spate. How are you playing recently leading into the tournament? But the Gophers say we are not going to be relaxed till we hear our name on selection Sunday. But they've been in that postseason mentality for a couple weeks now. Yeah, and there's certain things that you want to do when, you know, you're getting into December the way you want to play. And I feel like this Gopher team shows really great moments of that. Like, for example, you know, the last point, it comes down to a tough swing against a well-formed block. We've seen McKenna Wooker doing that. We've seen Taylor Lanfair do that. You know, high level of serve, serve, receive. That's where they're struggling right now. Uh, but there's certainly elements of their game that are going to keep them playing in December. So we just need to try to pull it together here. It's all about the serve, serve, receive. When they struggle on serve, receive, everything kind of, kind of falls apart for them. So, um, but this is a team that I think can go far in the tournament. Don't overlook the Gophers. Had high expectations coming into the season. And remember the times that they slipped up too. They were without Melanie Schaffmaster for a couple matches in the middle part of this season too. Something else the committee will take into its evaluation. Schaffmaster now goes to Wooker. Yeah! Horse perfectly off the block.
Well, Minnesota, we've been talking about their resume. They've got four wins against RPI top 50 teams, including number seven Oregon. Really that banner victory for yeah. them this season to fall back on. Yeah, that that was a great win for the Gophers. I believe that was in Palo Alto. And uh, yeah, they, they were just clicking so well that day. Clicking well is the block for Nebraska on that last swing. Yeah, Andy Jackson just reading the play perfectly, staying at home, being loaded, high hands, sealing that net, doing her job as a middle blocker. Six to one run for the Huskers. Gross. Wow, does she unleash the heat on that swing. And Minnesota needed it there within four. Yeah, Kylie Murr taking that ball and just passing it on a dime. And then a great one-on-one -on -one opportunity, or at least a nice seam for her to hit in. So Groat taking advantage of that seam and the block and ripping that ball. Walker with the go-to arm. Here in set three. Beeson into the block. Can't power it through, and the Gophers win that point. Gophers reading that five and five set to Beeson. Again, the bump set is high, gives the defense a lot of time to set up. So, Vantage clearly goes to the blocker. Minnesota doing their job there. Clamping down on Beeson. And they've been able to take quite a few of these longer rallies in their favor throughout this match. Beeson, well done. Sees a lot of hands, swings right through. Yeah, we talk about, you know, the last point of a close match. It comes down to a tough swing, and Beeson has delivered time and time again. And she's she just has no fear. She's got a lot of confidence, great athleticism, so she's just going for it. She doesn't care about the last shot. She's always looking ahead. Beeson misfires there. That's the sixth service error of this match for the Huskers. Julia Hansen, the Minnesota native stepping in to serve. Riley sets the Bane horse, and she has been unstoppable down the line tonight. Yeah, you've got to try to adjust according to what you see. And Batenhorst, you called it. She just ripped it down the line. She's been doing that quite a bit. So the set is perfectly placed, gives her an opportunity to hit any shot, but she's able to turn her body, get her hand on the ball, and just wipe it right down that line. Especially the way she's performed in the absence of Lindsay Krause, who's just starting to ramp things up in her return from an ankle injury last played on October 14th. Minnesota, meanwhile, Scoring once more is a three-point difference. Yeah. We don't always see a, a pass that turns into a kill, uh, but that's exactly what we saw on that play. So just miscommunication on the Husker side of the net. Because that's one of my favorite things in sports with Indiana ending a 21-match losing streak to Purdue. That's what makes this season fun is having that conversation, that debate, and how many different options there you really could go. Yeah, I think you're on the Nebraska payroll. Oh, gosh. I, I think you, yeah, Nebraska's got some great talent. Uh, Sloan, I can totally understand why you would pick some of those players. Uh, yeah, this conference is, is full of talented uh, athletes, and so it is so hard. There were so many times I wanted to do co-Big Ten player or co-defensive player talents all around. Oh, yeah, you wanted to be bailed out on our email chains earlier today, <laughs> but I will say that I do think when you are top one and two or top three in the country throughout the entire season, there should be a lot of representation of players from that team, those teams, on those accolades. All right, I'll give you that. <laughs> There's Andy Jackson. And she airs there, giving Minnesota another point. It's a 4 nothing run for the Gophers. Let's take a look at this serve. Yeah, it looks like it was going out, but you want to play the close ones. I think right there, that's just a, a, a miss hit. Uh, the ball needs to be set just a little bit higher for Andy Jackson. Elise McGee, a steady player at the service line. And how did she have the eyes on the side of her head? Bergen <laughs> Riley putting it down. 
Well, you know what? A good setter knows who's serving, knows what the defense looks like before the ball's ever in play. The beauty of volleyball is there's six rotations, so there's six mini game plans. And so she knows exactly who's serving. She knows where they're playing on defense. And, and she's very aware of that every rotation. Felt very Matt Pedraza-esque yeah. yeah. on that particular play. Land fair from passing to swinging. And Kamala tapping it right down, lands right in front of her. I'll take that, she says. Yeah, and uh, the fans in the path here, they're on their feet. They're loving what they're seeing right now. Good defensive get here by Nebraska, but that second contact just hanging above the net. Minnesota taking care of that ball. are also dependable at the service line for Minnesota. Bergen Riley tries to dump once more. Land fair off target there. And Minnesota back down by one. Yeah, so why did she make the error? The five and five set or the out of system set was not really where she needed it. So she needs to be able to drive forward on that attack. And that time the ball was set too far off the net. She stood and jumped. Groats is able to get that to land in the back corner, and we're tied up again. Grote hitting the same shot, so I'm a little surprised that Nebraska hasn't made an adjustment when she's in that rotation to at least the back court make that adjustment kind of shift a little bit more to the left back corner. Already 10 ties in set three alone. Merritt Keeson unwinds. Yeah, what's so impressive is she takes these balls and she approaches hard, and you can see that her distance is above the block. So just a great jumper. She touches so high and, again, plays with just so much confidence. Another time with that service air. You can feel the energy from yeah. the pav in this must-win set three. Bergen behind her head goes to Merritt Beeson. Another swing for Walker, and that is too long. You know, I really think coaches love these moments when the, the sets are tight, because you want to see what players rise to the occasion, which ones can just kind of compete and get the point, and who's going to bail on you. So I, I enjoy watching it, and I know the coaches do as well. The exact kind of moments you want to have heading into the tournament as well. Groats powers it through the block. Denied. And this is a great moment for this Minnesota team. Block doing exactly what they need to do, lining up beautifully, sealing the net. <laughs> Lots of happy, happy faces there after that big block. The fire of Erica Davis. Walker has been the go-to for that reason. Time out called. A Minnesota trying to force a set four. Walker gets it to fall. 
great transition, dig to kill. That was a great touch on the block to slow the ball down. Landfair taking care of it in the backcourt. And then it was Wooker finishing it off. The overpass. Points, Minnesota, and we head to four. High level of respect for John Cook. Everybody does. He knows his teams always perform well. And uh, he's ready to battle with him here as he's uh, in this conference with the Gophers. Up the middle, Becca Alec. And a kill for, Wisc uh, for Nebraska. It looked like that effort was going to pay off for McKenna Wooker for a moment, but just landing out. Well, what about Laney Boy's effort here, trying to make sure that the ball was out right away? Nebraska setting middle. And she took out assistant coach there. She's going so hard after the ball. This is tremendous effort. She got a great look at that. That ball was out. by Awalea. Big dig by Murr, keeping it up. And then the Nebraska block responds. Alec and Beeson teaming up. Yeah, right away you're seeing Nebraska intentionally set more middle. A couple times in transition, trying to get the middle attack going, trying to open things up for the outside, but it's that Nebraska block that comes through. Rhodes over the block, and there is Riley. <laughs> Putting it right down is Alec, timing it well, but the point to Minnesota with the violation. Yeah, let's see what happened there, because that looked like point for Nebraska. We're gonna see lots of great effort here. Ah, uh, in the net. Yep. The kind of Walker stuffed. A couple big blocks to start out set four by the Huskers. Yeah, and they're releasing early. There's no middle attack, so you're going to see here. Boom, number five goes. Lines up perfectly there, hip to hip. It's Becca Allen. Minnesota still leading in that category eight to seven. Off the overpass, Alec can't put it down. And that's a mental error there. I'm not quite sure what she was doing. A great opportunity for her to take that ball and just ram it down the Gophers throats, but she punches it out of bounds. Kylie Murrow back to serve for this Minnesota team that in set three trailed. 17 to 13, close on a 12 to 4 run. And keeping up this strong level of play. But the block is responding for Nebraska. Another stuff of Wooker. And Alec is fired up. Yeah, they're lining up really well. Obviously, the ball is, is bumps at high, gives the block an opportunity to set up, and then, again, it's where you line up with that outside hitter. That really counts. Too long is Rodriguez. That's the eighth surface air. Remember, there was a stretch in October through this season where the Huskers were having continually double-digit service errors, and Coach John Cook said, you're taking away blocks, you're taking away digs from yes. your teammates. Coming back to bite them a little bit here in Minneapolis. Baton Horst has been so strong going off the block tonight. Yeah, and just a good job of covering to give your offense another opportunity to score. But a good 5-5 five and five set here and just wiping it off the block again. But extending the rally by covering is really key here um, as you approach December. Wooker, that is a slice with power. 
Yeah, again, it's the B and the go. Andy Jackson jumps with the middle. Take a look here, number 15 in red, jumps with the middle. There's the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Uh, Brigham Riley was too far to the right. That approach was cross-court. So big kill for Wicker. 12 for Wooker. That's another one for Baton Horse. So Wooker leaves uh, for serve, and then she comes back in for Minnesota. Um, so she's out just for the serve, and then gets rotated right back in. defend that shot to be honest with you unless you just take a guess and and just assume she's going to hit cross court deep and, and adjust by moving your middle back all the way cross court but that's really just a tremendous shot by Lanker. Lying into the back row is Beeson. She is too strong. So you see how airs here are creeping into Nebraska's game. They were playing at such a high clip in sets one and two. Now a couple Unforced errors from the service line. Some errors on the swing, and Minnesota's right back in this match. Beeson taking some heat off this time. Harper Murray, the next contact is Shaftmaster over the net and still up. Beeson with a couple beautiful digs in the back row. Another one by Chopo. And then the air. Minnesota picks up another point to take the lead here in set four. I think the most fun thing of that rally is hearing the crowd just going, oh, ow, wow, after every dig. It was just spectacular. Great defensive gets. And then this one, just you can see no touch there. She was trying to go high, flat off the blocker's hands and missed it. On the slide, it is Jackson. And she also misses long. Yeah, this is a time for John Cook, yep, to call a timeout and regroup. So you talk about range, McKenna Wooker has it. Joe Boyce stepping in front and leading to a Murray kill. And it's serving for the Huskers, number nine, Kennedy Moore. Good response by Nebraska after that timeout. Had been a 4 0 run. As Harper Murray now reaching a double double. He's going to reset and go to Beeson. Harper Murray once more. Back-to-back -back kills for the freshman. You know, Nebraska seemed to be struggling a little bit in serve, serve, receive. They kind of sharpened up here. And there's that hyper Harper Murray, big swing on that left pin. Kennedy Orr getting the Gophers out of system. a different type of Minnesota team. They are playing with no fear. They're not playing perfectly. The passes aren't always to the setter, but they compete hard within the rallies. And Lanfair just going for it on that left side. Three kills here in the fourth set for Lanfair. Shaftmaster misses long. We're tied up again. Bergen Riley stepping back to serve. Oh, 
But with Roach has also been a go-to in the latter parts of this match. Roach has been great on that left side, especially in that server seat pattern. She has been the go-to always in this server seat pattern, just swinging big for the Gophers. Wow, that's key. Eight kills for Groats. That goes into the nets. Yeah, back-to-back -back serving errors right now for the Minnesota team. You know, once you feel a little bit momentum after that Groat kill, you want to go back and just keep pushing. Put Nebraska in a difficult situation. You don't want to hand over an easy point. Walker. And a point to Nebraska. Well, she can't power it through that time. Strong hands by Becca Alec. She's sealing that cross court shot with her left hand, not allowing that ball to go past her. Walker lands it in the back row. Yeah, the balls that are deflected and that ricochet off the block are so hard for the backcourt defense. What a great set by Shaftmaster, moving back and pushing that ball all the way outside, and then Wooker delivering a big swing. Murr targeting Batenhorst. Then she goes on the attack. Batenhorst, another swing, and that time she terminates. Yeah, as an outside hitter, you can get a sense of where the block is, and when there's space between the blockers, you go for it. They're definitely still on Batenhorst on the serve, but she's able to find this hole in the block and deliver a kill. Groats has that swing smothered. Batenhorst in on the stop. And this is that give and take where Batenhorst maybe struggles and serve receive. Look at how she makes up for it right here. A great block, great read, lines up perfectly. So, you know, kind of, you're not always going to be great in every single aspect of the game. Batenhorst really doing a good job of playing hard at the net. Rodriguez with the surface air. <laughs> Rope now serving for the Gophers. Eric Beeson pulling it off the block. Well, there's that trust to want the ball. Batenhorst takes that ball on serve receive, delivers a great pass, and then Burgum Riley reversing the flow. The ball comes from left back. She sets right front, gives her hitter a great opportunity to swing for a win. That takes her above 20 kills. Eric Davis pushing it over. Landfair for the Whoa, another swing that almost takes off someone's head. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of Landfair swinging in that back row position. This time a great opportunity. Take a look at how she takes that first step right as the setter is setting the ball. And then she doesn't hit it into the block. She makes sure that she hits it to the right back area of the court. Really tough for the right back defender to play that ball. Baden Horse getting a lot of action, and that's because she is finishing. Yeah, boy, she's taking multiple swings before the rally is done, so that's a test of her physical conditioning, taking big swings every time, maximizing that uh, approach and her jump, and just keeping that hand high, swinging hard through the ball. Landfair off the bump set. One more swing and absorbing that heat is Rodriguez. And the stop up the middle. What a denial by Erica Davis. 
Yeah, this is great vision, knowing what Nebraska likes to do in transition swings, and they like that attack by Beeson. And so, as a blocker, you have to just wait and see what the tendencies are, let a couple of the sets play out, and then you make those adjustments. So Erica Davis doing a good job of reading that play. Top 10 in the Big Ten and blocks for sex. And they can do it when she's off the floor as well. Shaftmaster and Owl layup with the rejection. Interesting test right here for the Huskers. How will they react? They've not been stuffed blocked like this twice in a row. And these are big time blocks. Let's see how they react with this next play. Great effort by Wooker. Stepping in is Harper Murray, and she registers the kill. Yeah, again, that flat swing, not going down on the ball, not with the top spin shot that sometimes players like, but just hitting it flat and hard off the block, driving that ball high off hands. Shaftmaster has the ability to do a lot of crazy things with the ball. Take a look at how she makes the best out of a poor pass. Ball was moving her back. She knows exactly the strength that it takes to place it right in that corner. Does a remarkable job with that pass. Beeson from the back row, dug by Merck. Groats. Too strong. Yeah, Gro got under that ball and it was behind her. So as she swung, just a miss hit. But uh, here she is in that left front position. We'll see if she delivers a kill like she has in the past in this rotation, which is rotation one. Set her back court, right back. Landfair is stuffed herself. And timeout called by Minnesota. Becca Alec in on that start. Harper Murray with three. <laughs> Tough set for Landfair. <laughs> Landfair smiling after that set to grow. Landfair into the block, and Becca Alec making her presence known. Yeah, she's feeling it. I love the competitive spirit of Becca Alec. She is a baller. Take a look at how she reaches, and then that attitude afterwards. She's like, no, that, yeah, that ball's not come past me. She is in the zone. Look at her. Wow. Eight blocks. Harper Murray into that Minnesota block, and there is Murr. And then she's able to get it to land. Yeah, great defense on both sides of the net. Kylie Murr with a key dig down the line to extend that rally, but Harper Murray knows exactly where the defense is. She knows Shaftmaster is playing a deep line on her and kisses that ball right over top of the block. Nebraska first to 20 on a 4 0 scoring run. Landfair tools it, just what Minnesota needed. And we have talked about Minnesota's resume, but how about this going toe to toe with Nebraska? Yeah, I mean, that's what they needed to do. They had to have a strong performance tonight. They took a set. And they are in position here to win the fourth set as well. Strong serving and passing will help them here in the tail end of this fourth set. They've won four straight matches, performing at their best this season, taking care of business, winning here down the stretch, and putting up a big fight. 
against the number one team in the country with just one blemish on their record. Excellent job by Awalea reading that. is stuffed. Becca Alec, another block. And that is six in set four. She is a beast. Take a look at how she just reaches over. Yeah, she's having quite the night. Becca Alec, star of the show here in the fourth set. She's playing like they want to get back to Lincoln. Yeah. Sooner rather than later. Yeah. Look her. Beautifully done with that swing. Minnesota showed a whole lot of resilience in set three, trailing 17-13 before winning 25-21. And they'll need that here late with Nebraska inching closer to match point. Beeson. Walker into the block, exactly what she wanted, yeah. tuning it off. Yeah. We talk about what you have to do going into December. Walker has to do just what she's doing here, a tough swing against a well-formed block. You know, this Nebraska blocking team, we highlighted how great they have been, but you cannot fear the block. If you're going to be the best outside hitter and the hitter that your team needs, you have to go and you have to swing with confidence. That went from near disaster yeah. to a point for the Huskers. Yeah, you just have to compete, and you got to know what to do in the not-so-perfectly scripted plays. Becca Alec doing exactly that, getting a point. Somehow, some way, she is on fire. Add that kind of play to her career night. Nine blocks for her six just in this set. Unbelievable competitor. Looker over the block, and there is Riley. High set for Beeson. And kept alive by Minnesota. Beeson off the free ball, and there is Murr. Batenhorst into the block. They have had no answer for that swing. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to be good on the outside and on the right side. And Batenhorst doing her job here, delivering kills, tail end of this fourth set. It is match point for Nebraska. Looking to put a bow on a near perfect season. And it looks like Keegan Cook having a conversation with the referee. And he will be bringing a challenge. Minnesota. Point. And it actually was a net violation. Maybe we'd see, yeah, I see a couple more angles there. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, but, you know, uh, it must have been obvious or they wouldn't have overturned this one yet. That makes it a three-point difference in a must-win set four for the Gophers. Minnesota's third ace of the night. Yeah, that is a huge, huge serve, keeping Minnesota alive. Point lead for the Huskers. Rowe coming off an ace. Back to the service line. Targeting Murray. Beeson off the tape. It lands. Yeah, 
a little, little roll off the tape, played the luck on her side. And it's match point for Nebraska. could be bringing his remaining challenge here, and he is. And this could potentially yeah. determine this match. Yeah, I, I'd like to take another look at that. What do you think, Sloan? I thought it might have been out upon first look. Mm. Agree? Yeah, I think as as if the ball is touching the court right there on the bounce. Or does it get a little just a touch of, the line? of that Gosh. line? Gosh. Yeah. I you can see some empty space. And this landing right in right. front of the line judge. Right. But right there where it's frozen, yeah. you see a little bit of that space, I think. Maybe not enough to overturn that one. Yeah. And it is a point to Minnesota. Another look there. You can see a little bit of a shadow. Sigh of relief for the Gophers. Can stay alive against the number one team in the country. And for Wooker, that is five kills here in the fourth set. Match point number three for the Huskers. Oh. Great read by Rodriguez, even better by Murray, and we play on. On the overpass, a chance for the Huskers. Murray, back row blasts, is kept up. And Minnesota responds again. Wow, they're putting a triple block up, and yet the block gets deflected off the arms of Nebraska and out of bounds. A four to one run by Minnesota. And match point number four for Nebraska.